Hello and welcome to the second episode of For Truck's Sake, where we're looking at what a career as a lorry driver actually looks like and whether it's a career any of us should be considering. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube or listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, it's great to have you here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button so you don't miss any future episodes. Louise and Beth are with me today. Got some very exciting news to kick off with, guys. We've just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Hey, that's Woo! wicked. Here we go. <laughs> There you go, see, there you go, see, truck, trucking has a future. That's what, that's what this tells us. Um, 2,000 views on episode one as well, so everything's, yeah, it's all going swimmingly. All good direction, right? Well, Louise, though, I do have a question, because you've okay. been hosting a rival podcast, What the Truck. <laughs> do you know what? I think, I think I've, just, I've just gone with the phrase and um, run with it. They're the, that's, that's my thought. No, literally, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting into the, the flow of the, the name now. I've got it. So there we go. So um, we're going to hear more about that and how Louise got on on the, uh, the simulator. I think she's got a big future as a truck driver. Sure. I'll be hearing about that a little bit later. Um, how are you doing, Beth? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. You're, um, you're moving, though. So do you have any idea where any of your possessions are? <laughs> Not a clue. It is just Box City in my house right now, so it's not ideal, guys. But yeah, I'm gonna make through. I'm gonna get through it with a truck. Here's another thing: why we all need these things in our lives. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it, though? Because you kind of pack up when you move, and suddenly you realise that like, oh, okay, fine, okay, yeah, we'll move in a couple of days, and you realise you've packed the remote or something. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's just you know basic stuff that you think, oh, I, I won't need that, and then you're like. No, I, I need everything. I need all my things at all times. That's why I have them. <laughs> it is immensely stressful, though, moving. So I don't envy you. Um, loads coming up today, by the way. We're going to see how Louise got in the simulator. Like I said, we're also going to be talking uh, about the weird and wonderful world of trucking on social media. Um, but Louise, have you had, a, you had a good week? I have, yeah. It's been, it's been all right, you know. It's been good fun. It's been um, a nice busy one, which has been good. But um, getting getting into the autumn vibes now. It's getting a bit chilly, isn't it? I got my hat on the other day. <laughs> it's weird, though, isn't it? Because like, I'd, so I go up and down the country quite a lot, and I would say it's a good thirty degrees hotter in London than it is in the north. <laughs> I completely agree. I was in Manchester um, earlier this week, and honestly, I was like, I can't believe how cold it is. I was like, I need a coat here. I didn't <laughs> have one. I only had a little jacket, and you know, got through it though. We're all right. We're still here, so it's okay. Well, I tell you what must have kept you going. Let's let's get to the the first main event of the podcast. Let's talk about how you got on on the simulator. Do you want to describe what it is to us and your your original impressions? Yes. So um, I've been playing on a truck simulator, and again, like I said in the last podcast, truck simulator ultimate. Because nice. we go we go we go hard in this podcast. You know what I mean? We've mm. got to go ultimate. Um, and it was my first kind of proper go on it. I'd say. I had a mission to complete. I had to take a load um, to a service station and drop it off and park. Um, but the first bit meant that I had to actually attach the truck um, to the front of the truck, to the back of the truck, basically. So you've got the cargo on the back. And uh, I think that took a bit longer than I thought. Uh, we were hoping for a little five minute go at this game. Uh, it took me a whole 45, <laughs> 45 minutes. Um, half of it was me trying to attach the truck in the first place. And then getting the levels right, because you have to be the right speed to go down the road as well. And it does cap you if you go over the speed. So it'll bring your speed down, um, which does slow the game down a little bit. Do you know what? I was fine on the roads, I have to say. I was fine. Did um, narrowly miss a few cars uh, <laughs> down, down the motorway. Um, not in real life, on the game, um, which was fine. Um, and then by the time I got to dropping off the load, my truck was on fire a little yeah, bit. How, how did that happen? I think that I, um, basically, I was running out of fuel. I had to go and stop for fuel, but I didn't stop for fuel. I was like, you know what, no, we're going. We're yeah, going. We're we've got to we're get getting these things. sandwiches to Greg's. We have to get these sandwiches <laughs> to Greg's, you know what I mean? It's important before before something happens. Mm. Um, and I think that, that there was nothing kind of in my engine, so it started to kind of smoke a little bit. So that kind of ruined my view. Um, but, you know, we got we got there. We did get there eventually. Um, and I think it was a bit of a skill that, you know, we got there without it combusting at some point. That that's kind of good, and then I had to park, which um, caused difficulty. And if you're going to watch it, which is on YouTube now, by the way, when you can you can watch me playing the game, um, you're going to see the frustration of me trying to park, but staying very calm, staying very very calm. <laughs> well, 
it is meant to take uh, five minutes, isn't it? Not not forty five. Surely, you, yeah. when your truck catches fire, that is a fail. I think when your truck catches fire, you need to stop. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> listen to the van, listen to the truck, listen to the surroundings. Um, and yeah, because in real life, if your truck was smoking, you'd you'd pull over, wouldn't you? You wouldn't keep going. <laughs> Absolutely you, not. You would stop. I think legally, we should say you should stop. You should stop. A hundred percent. How do you think Beth and I will get on? I think you're both going to do all right. You know, I think, I mean, you know, I gave it a big and didn't I? I was like, oh, you guys know I'm going to do this. I feel like, yeah, I feel like you're going to get this. I mean, the parking, though, I'm going to say it's it's quite tricky, but I think I've set the bar pretty low. Not going to lie. So, yeah, I think you've got this, guys. I think you can do it. Yeah, Beth, as, as the only person here who sort of really knows something about the automotive industry, do you think Louise sounds like she'd make a good truck driver? Um, I mean, the captain on fire bit is definitely a little bit worrying. I hope Greg's wanted their sandwiches toasted that day. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> <red flag. laughs> that steak bake is well and truly cooked. It's charcoal. It's it's baked. Charcoal. <laughs> I'm hoping I will do better than that, as I, I feel I do have a little bit of knowledge of the truck world now. Um, and I'd like to say I'm, I'm a good driver, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to put that out there and say, I'm going to smash it. <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but doesn't everybody think they're a good driver? Well, I guess so, but I know that I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love this confidence, Beth. Love it. <laughs> um, right now, I understand that, that, Beth, you've got a few questions for me. I do. Which I'm dreading a bit. Well, Joe, you conveniently dodged the part where you were going to speak about yourself and mm. we'd love to know a little bit about you so fire away tell us a little bit about joe i mean where, where to start um it's a it's a riddle wrapped in an enigma uh, no i don't um yeah to be honest um just <laughs> grew up in southwest london <laughs> um started working on uh, the radio when I was about 22 and kind of worked on the radio and online and did TV and stuff um and I like history <laughs> so I like castles and I like football and I don't know what else to say I can feel myself sweating <laughs> well I've got a question for you yes actually, Joe. I hear you actually have some connections in the world of celebrities I hear you have interviewed some quite well-known people as a significantly younger man, um, my first biz my first job was um, a showbiz news presenter. So I used to do that really annoying show. If you're ever watching, we could bleep this out. We can't use the channel. But if you're ever watching like ITV Two and you're getting really into like the Bourne Ultimatum or something, and then like at a moment of real tension, it will pop up. It'll be like Jason Bourne's back in a minute, guys. Meanwhile, Justin Bieber, <laughs> like that. I used to do that. Um, so, so I used to go have to go to red carpets and stuff, and like ask celebrities what their favourite tea bag. Well, no, that's the wrong choice of words. Um, what their, what their <laughs> do not do not ask celebrities about. Tea. Yeah, um, but, um, what? Yeah, kind of like what their favourite biscuit was and stuff. So um, yeah, I did, I did that for a few years and kind of. Uh, I sort of realised after a while that I, I thought it would kind of be all um, uh, chatting with Martin Scorsese about what it's like working with Robert De Niro, but it's more chatting with Gemma Collins about where she gets her shoes from. <laughs> <laughs> that was, wasn't really my bag, um, but it was good fun. It's good fun. I got to do lots of weird and wonderful stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. And also, I've got to point out, last time you were very interested in my katanas, the swords on the wall. But I hear you have some experience with swords yourself. <laughs> wow, you've done your research. <laughs> Digging um, in. <laughs> yeah, God, that takes me back. So I had to make a video once with, uh, this is, all sounds so sordid. No pun intended, actually, but sorry. Was, um, with There was like a circus that came to London. And I got sent down to interview a few of the the acts. And one of them was a girl from Brooklyn who was a sword swallower. And um, wow. so literally, like, honestly, if you've seen, like, Game of Thrones, like, full on, like, Valyrian steel blade. <laughs> like, literally, like, I, I mean, you don't have any perspective on how long that is because I'm on the camera, aren't I? Uh, but, like, like, three foot long. And she was just like, okay, you want to see me do it? And we're like, okay, yeah, roll the camera. And then she like, this is there's no way to do this mime well. She like puts it in like, like and it goes all the way down to the hill. 
<laughs> and literally, like, I'm there on camera as well going like, because <laughs> like, it's it's not a nice thing to see. The cameraman was just cracking up laughing. Yeah, and, um, and then afterwards you have to go, oh, how did you learn to do that? <laughs> and stuff. So, so yeah that was um that was another an, yeah another high point <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for sharing that information joe <laughs> i see why you tried to dodge it last time but it's in the open now <laughs> oh i feel like i've revealed more of myself there than i should that's the uh, worst question though is it what tell us about you and you're like right okay well i want someone at a sword right <laughs> yeah it's like blind date isn't it it's like yeah it. Right, we've been dipping into the world of uh, social media this week and I found myself tumbling down the rabbit hole of the world of, of trucks and, and lorry driving. Um, lots of interesting things. We'll get to, to trucker porn, to front end Friday, to all that kind of stuff. Um, Beth, what was your experience of the world of trucks on social media? Well, I have been pleasantly surprised, I must say. It's it's amazing how much of a community there is out there. This is the great thing about social media, isn't it? It doesn't matter sort of who you are, where you come from, what your interests are. You will find a community of people that share that mm. same love. And that's been really cool to have a little look into that. I found this one girl that really stuck out to me. I feel like she's really kind of like breaking all the stereotypes. She's this blonde, beautiful girl, and she's she's into her trucks. She's got her own truck, and like she looks after it so well. She's cleaning it all the time, making sure it's it's all serviced and doing all the things you need to do. But she also shows this really healthy balance of going out, and she gets dressed up. She wears lovely dresses, and you can just see how she's living this trucker life but also her own life at the same time. She's going out, she's socialising, and she's a really brilliant example. If you guys want to check her out, her name's Jen Warren on Instagram. Um, yeah, That's and she's built, she's built up a following through this, and I totally see why people are following her. She's very inspiring. Jen Warren on Instagram, let's have a look at her. Because um, I found some some quite interesting stuff, and I, I was ended up with... Um with a few questions because there's quite a lot of people who take photos of their trucks and make the trucks look quite sexy. So they're like, so this is the hashtag front end Friday where you show the front of your, your cab basically. And it's all kind of moody lighting and people kind of leaning against the truck. And then loads of people commenting just like, I love the <laughs> ch chassis on that <laughs> or whatever. But do you know, do you, if, if I was a truck driver, would I own the truck? And then I'd go, you can hire me in my truck or do people lease me? This is what I don't know. That is a good question. I mean, yeah. look, there must be, there must be, maybe there's like, you know, like you have rate my plate on Facebook. Maybe Wait. there's like a rate my truck. Rate your plate. Have you never heard of rate my plate? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So they basically, well, this is good off topic, but they basically put like, people like just put their dishes in this Facebook group. And it's always like these mad dishes that just look gross and you say, rate my plate. Um, so yeah, right, rate my truck, I suppose. It's similar, like people, you kind of, this is me, this is a bit of me. And then they go, yeah, maybe I'll buy you both. Well, because there's also, there's lots of rating websites, aren't there? There's, yeah. um, there's, there's rate my feet as well. See, oh. I know that one. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my girlfriend and I were discussing yesterday how to make a bit of extra money. And she did say, what about foot websites? <laughs> I was Look, like, a big I, don't, market. I don't think it was serious. <laughs> I also don't think anyone is paying to look at my feet, but <laughs> no. Got to try these things. But yeah, we'll I reckon it's a pod. similar thing with the truck, though. I think that's a similar, similar way it probably goes down. Oh my god, should we get that going? Rate, rate my truck. I think that works. There we go. Hashtag yeah. rate my truck. We should do it. Um, Louise, what, what what kind of thing did you discover on social media? So I went down the more comedic route. Um, and found some really interesting sort of like um, comedy uh, videos. Um, the first guy I found was called Trucker Tim. Um, <laughs> and he's really cool because he kind of gives you an insight into what it's like when you pull over to the side of the road and um, the kind of day to day of driving a truck. And he actually installed a bath into his truck. So um, what, what, he's not like he's not obviously like naked and stuff. But when he, he kind of like takes us through like when how he relaxes when he's like um, got 25 minutes break on the hard shoulder 
and he's literally installed this full-on bath in his truck so he just like he can like the water comes in he's got his little shower gels and stuff and he just sits in his bath for like <laughs> 25 minutes and then he just gets back on the road but it's quite interesting that you can install that and he also had a bed in one of his trucks as well so he could sort of like take a nap and things like that <laughs> so he's kind of got this like really cool like front of his truck where he kind of like puts different things in and i thought that was really fun and a really interesting way of kind of seeing how maybe truckers unwind in different ways which was quite cool there's quite a lot of accounts i noticed on tiktok as well so there's uh trucker dan mm. this guy called egghead reboiled i believe Love his that. name is um and there's another guy called what's his name uh yeah so there's trucker matt as well and all of these people, they kind of, the, it, it's like a theme. They kind of shoot it. So they've got the phone down in the side of their cab. Yeah. And it's kind of their musings on life, the universe, and being a truck driver. So stuff like, oh, stuff that we would never know about. Like, how annoying is it when Trump, someone is trying to talk to you through the window when you're trying to do a blindside reverse? <laughs> it's like, I've got no idea. You tell me. Let's yeah. <laughs> But honestly, I think if you want to get in touch with us and you've got any thoughts or you kind of you're you're the one of these people who films themselves, you want to get a social media account going, please do, because I feel like we're really delving into the weird and wonderful world of trucking here. Um, Louise, what are your kind of first thoughts of of the industry at the moment? I mean, it's it's quite interesting. I mean, I, I, even like with the TikTok and stuff, I was learning about, you know, how what's like illegal and legal with the, the trucking because you sometimes <clears throat> don't think about that and it's even like if you go over a certain weight you know slightly um that's illegal um and it's interesting to see like there are ways to kind of um there's like little intricacies that i didn't really think about if that's kind of you know you just kind mm. of think oh it gets on the road and you've got your load at the back and you kind of go to where you need to go but there are like some ins and outs so i'm finding it quite interesting learning the kind of intricacies with trucking that i might not have thought of and the lifestyle as well because the lifestyle i think you don't know and to be able to see an inside look into people's lifestyles on the road it's quite interesting and you know the videos that i've seen people seem really sort of uplifting and happy with what they're mm. doing and i think that's really nice it's it's very passionate which i think is quite cool yeah beth like you said like you, you could find your community wherever you are is that kind of something you've seen as well that there's just a big community of super passionate people yeah for sure it is like that it's just everyone's come to get everyone loves their job it seems like if you're in the trucking industry you are doing it because you love it and that you you sense that from the people that you see online and when you meet them in person as well they do just have this passion inside of them and they love talking about it and showing their truck off and you know it, i can relate to it in the same way i would feel about that about my motorbike Someone asked me a question about my motorbike, you won't shut me up, you know? I love talking about it and showing it off and all the rest of it. And that's the same with these people with their trucking world. It's yeah, I love that. It's awesome. So true. Have you though with the the hashtag truck porn, which has um got nearly three million hits, have you found yourself is there kind of a crossover with like motorbikes and trucks? Like is because I guess what's the way to phrase this? Do you find your motorbike as sexy as these people find their trucks? That's what I'm asking. 100% it is like that. And it's like, I I class it in just kind of like the motor world. That's what it's mm. like. If you've got, you know, a really nice car, you just love your car. It's the same. If you, you're like, you love your car, you love your motorbike or your truck, it actually comes under the same category, which I never would have thought about before until now um it is one of those things like if you're out on a ride you, you're at a cool place and you you park it up and you're like oh that's a good shot and you take a picture of it and that's what these guys are doing with their trucks yeah it's awesome <laughs> Love that. and louise did you did you actually hit follow on any of these accounts do you know what um i didn't but um, my, I, I, I'm just trusting the algorithms now. I, I'm leaving it in the hands of the algorithm. Uh, but no, but I've got, I've got all of them all written down. So I think I'm going to check out a few more videos and give them, give them a follow. What about you guys? Did you guys follow any? Couple of I, I did follow Egghead Reboiled. I mean, so, the name alone. The name alone. <clears throat> yeah, so he's on TikTok if you don't know him. And um, he was one of the original links that we explored. And his kind of stuff is quite philosophical. And like I say, it's kind of musings about life the universe that kind of thing but also then real gear change again no pun intended to talk about his truck um 
So in terms of, of moving forward with your, your journey with, with trucking, Beth, what's kind of, what's the next avenue that you want to explore? I want to see a little bit more of like what happens outside of being in the truck. And that's what I really liked when I found Jen Warren on Instagram, because she shows that side to her. You know, they, they love their trucks and the industry that they're in. But I also want to see what goes on outside of physically being inside it, because I think that does play a bigger part than we realise. Um, even like Louise trying to put the trucks on the together, you know, and you found it so hard and it probably is so hard to do that. And I want to find out a little bit more about all that kind of thing, really. Do you, do you know what? I'm glad you said that because I'm very interested in the social side of it. So obviously you see these guys and girls driving trucks and they're on their own. So what happens when you do stop at a little chef? Like, do you know, do you know all the other truckers or like, are you kind of friends? Is there a sense of community? That's something that I'm really interested in because my one worry, Louise, is that it, it seems quite lonely at times. Yeah, I think so as well. I think because you are on your own and I think it's kind of, you know how to entertain yourself for uh, numerous hours because it can be a long drive sometimes and i mean i'm quite interested in seeing how it is for different terrains and how that can affect it as well you know when like it's snowing or like different times of the year and how that because i was looking at um a youtuber called angelica larson and she um is out uh, i'm not sure exactly where she lives but she lives obviously in a place where it's very snowy and very um the terrain's very different and stuff so you know it's interesting to see how you kind of cope with different types of weather because when it's cold and you know having to change things around it must be it must be like quite unbearable sometimes well scary as well because you're driving several tons that's quite unwieldy yeah um yeah times. i think it sounds very very exciting right okay so we had a little look into the world of tiktok instagram a little bit of social media if you've got any accounts that you think we should follow do check it out um we are going to be back next week looking into the strange world of trucks on youtube to be honest it's not quite as um kind of sexy and salacious as instagram and ticker ticker tiktok that's what it's called isn't it was tick ticker yeah, twitter you, you got any word for it <laughs> so yeah my my space ever said messenger all of them <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to be looking into the world of YouTube and checking out lots of instructional videos and seeing if we can learn a little bit more. Um, Louise, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been good fun again. Uh, Beth, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you also. Yeah, and I've enjoyed it. Always have a laugh with you guys, which is what it's all about. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we'll see you next time on For Truck's Sake.